Hey, hey everybody. I'm Radek Paszkowski, a shader magician, and I love art. Not only the computer graphics one, but I also love painting and music. Especially I plan to become a musician uh, because I was playing instruments for a long part of my life. But I love math and games a bit more. That's why I decided to become a game programmer. And currently I'm working at Pixel and Game Studio, where I'm bringing pixels back to life. And today we'll talk about a special kind of pixels. Pixels that are often neglected, but cover a large portion of your screen. And those pixels belong to the grass. And the title might seem a little bit intimidating and quite scary. And the topic I'll cover today is quite similar. However, I will show you some tips, tricks, tools to make it super easy and quick to implement this new technique of grass I will show you. First, let's start uh, how most games are implementing their grass today. And uh, they are doing this by using something called mesh cards. And these are just flat planes with a texture of a grass on it. And uh, it can be a quad, it can be a little more complex like we see on the slide. And I have a couple of examples from games like Horizon Zero Dawn and Elden Ring that use this technique. And probably when you are running around, doing some quests, slaying monsters, you don't notice anything wrong with this grass, right? So why should we even care about that? But if you take a closer look at the grass, you start noticing that um, the grass is uh, like, you see those lines when the grass is intersecting the ground and you see that um, it doesn't interact with the light nice. The animation is kind of weird. And if you look at it uh, from the top, then it, it either disappears or grows suddenly perpendicular to the ground, which is quite weird. Uh, so we got used to this kind of cross rendering. But there is a new solution that is being used in some games. And this is something I call perblade mesh grass. And there are a couple of games that are already using this technique, like Ghost of Tsushima and Genshin Impact. Also, Zelda Breath of the Wild uses uh, the same technique. And as immediately you can see that the grass is much more dense. Um, it interacts with the light better. And there is a lot of potential to grow with this technique. And also I wanted to mention Grounded, which I love playing with my girlfriend, just an amazing game, and it uses Kind of similar technique, like each grass blade is a separate entity with a uh, separate mesh. So it looks really cool, in my opinion. And there are a couple of assumptions we need to make with this new technique. The first one is that um, the grass should be uh, full 3D opaque models, so that, uh, that we don't have to worry about transparency. We don't have to worry about sorting and overdraw. However, we need a lot more instances compared to the previous technique. Uh, also, we want our grass to be interactable, so it can interact with the player, with the wind, with uh, other entities. And fourth point, uh, we want it to be deterministic, so that if you are running around, the grass still looks okay. Like, it's, uh, it's not like going, uh, each grass of blade is not going with you, because uh, the system works in a way that the player is in the center and the grass render it, uh, render it is uh, around him. Also, uh, the fifth point is that we want it to be artist outdoors, so your artist can change the look and feel of your grass. And the last point is that we are working in games, so it needs to run in real time. So to summarize, we want to go from this barren land to this nice looking grass of field, which is quite opposite of what Palant is doing. So let's get to it. Uh, here you can see uh, how the grass system looks like, and it consists of a couple of different systems, like the shading, animation, shape, and placement. We'll talk uh, about most of them. And the process of each grass blade that it needs to go through to re be rendered is like seen on the uh, slides. So you have like the input data, you throw it to compute shader, then it um, turns it out and, uh, and you get the instance data. 
And then you just put it to like vertex and pixel shader. And the first part is the input data. Uh, you can have different input data depending on your needs. Uh, I just use this ones for my project. As you can see, like I have a height map because I want to know where to place my grass. I have some wind and interaction texture. As I mentioned, the grass should be interactable. And there are some uh, standard stuff like the area size. So how big of an area should the grass cover and also the spawn count or density. So uh, how far spread away should the grass be? And there are a couple of others like the model and materials that we all need. And on the right, you can see uh, the wind texture that I really easily created in Unreal. And you can do that by using a couple of blocks. And as you can see, it's quite easy uh, by just using a couple of noise blocks driven by texture coordinates and some time value. You can create this nice looking um, wind texture, which you can then use in your uh, grass material to render your grass and to animate it. And uh, also, I'm here using the Z coordinate, uh, which is, might be quite weird because the uh, wind is 2D. However, I use this coordinate uh, for the strength of the wind uh, at the position. For the interaction, I use the standard uh, render target textures where I just uh, place the camera underneath the ground and render the player's feet from the ground as you can see, it saves the position of the player in the texture, which I can then use to animate the grass basically by making it flat. Uh, this technique scales really well because you can uh, put more entities and it will render pretty fast. And this technique also needs to be double buffered because we want to some, uh, have some persistency uh, in our texture so that the grass st uh, stays flat uh, for some time and we have some fading of the effect. So we need to set up a second interaction texture, uh, which, will, uh, which will copy our data to, with a simple material. So here you can see on the slide uh, how to set up such a texture. So it's also quite easy. The high I implemented with uh, runtime visual textures, which is something quite new in Unreal. And uh, I think it's just amazing. Because with a couple of steps, you can uh, get the height map of your ground. As you can see, I only set up the volume, and then I have one block runtime visual texture output where I just put my wall height. It can be not only used for the height map, but you could also get the uh, color or normals of the, your landscape, and then use it for blending like your rocks or your environment into the ground, which is quite useful. Now that we have our input data, we can process it in a compute shader. And for that purpose, I use Niagara. Niagara. <laughs> and uh, compute shader will calculate our position, our facing, and also some Bezier curve parameters, which we'll use to uh, calculate the shape of our grass and also do some animations, which you will see. Uh, Niagara doesn't have any kind of like deterministic um, modules that you could use. And uh, I needed to create a couple of my own, uh, but it is quite uh, easy because you can just press this green button and then uh, select new scratch pad module, and then you will be able to create your own module. And what we want to achieve with the compute shader, we want to have this um, uniformly spread grass in this kind of grid pattern, which we then can um, uh, jitter a little to give it some kind of natural look. And we have uh, on the input, we have the grid size, the spawn count, and also uh, Niagara gives us something like unique particle ID. And the calculations are quite simple, as you can see, the uh, scratch part module uh, looks quite similar to, like, you know, uh, blueprints or material editor. And uh, the calculations are fairly easy. So you have like square root of spawn count because the area we want to cover is uh, uh, square. And also the cell size we can calculate from that. And there are a couple of more calculations. Uh, only 
one is um, pretty important and you have to be cautious about because we can't use the unique particle ID uh, because if you would use that and the system will, uh, would move you with you, then the grass, each grass blade would, uh, would move with you also, which would look pretty weird. So you need to calculate the hash based on the position of each grass blade. Also, as a side note, uh, I needed to calculate some random rotations. I just put uh, everything from uh, by hand. And if you go through Stack Overflow or some other uh, game dev forums, you might know that if you use quaternions, you will die or something like this. I use them. I'm still alive. I'm the proof that you can use uh, quaternions. So now that we uh, uh, have some data from the compute shader, uh, there are a bunch of them, like the position, facing, per blade hash. Uh, we can start calculating uh, the, the look and feel of our grass. And uh, three I didn't touch in the previous slides, which are the tilt, bend, midpoint, like the Bezier curve parameters. And these are basically uh, random values from a range of values uh, that are driven via this per blade hash. And now we can calculate our Bezier curve. And um, the first point of the Bezier curve is basically on the base of our grass. So at the position 0, 0, and we do all of that in 2D space to make it really easy and don't care about the third dimension. So then we can calculate the end point of our grass by using the tilt and height. And the uh, last point we can calculate by taking a point between the start and the end point and then offsetting it by the bend. And this technique is pretty fast and cheap because it's basically a bunch of uh, linear interpolations. Uh, but it's, what is also cool is that it's simple to calculate a derivative. So the, um, on the bottom you can see a bunch of formulas that, um, that is basically a Bezier curve formula and the derivative of, of it. So you see how simple it is to calculate. And we also can omit a part of it because the first point, the start point, is at zero, zero. And this is really nice because if you know uh, how the derivative, uh, derivatives work, then it's just a tangent. So we can cal cal calculate from that a normal, binormal, and, and uh, thanks to that we can calculate the lightning. And the animation is done by using uh, this bend, tilt, and also the midpoint parameters, which I talked about. So here I'm just uh, moving around some points using a random wave. And this random wave is basically a bunch of sine waves uh, with different frequencies and amplitudes. This is not the most efficient way of uh, animating, but for my purpose, uh, it was quite good looking, so I decided to just leave it for now. <laughs> and the last part of grass rendering is the pixel shader. So here we want to calculate the color of our grass, the rough, uh, roughness, and also the normal. And the first two we can calculate from the texture coordinates. And uh, here I'm just doing some calculations which are smoothing um, the, the grass look over the uh, X coordinate. And there are so a couple of um, different uh, nodes here. And the normal we calculate from the derivative, as I said. And to also convince you that this is quite simple to implement, uh, this is like a couple of days of my work. So the first screenshot you can see on the uh, left top is what I got after a couple of hours of my work. And then the last screenshot you can see is after just three days of work uh, when I never used Ni Niagara before. And uh, after a week I had this working with animations, with interactions. So it went really well, really fast. And the main takeaways I want you to take from my presentation is that uh, using Niagara is really cool because you can really quickly get some nice results and uh, it's great for prototyping or if you want to show to your stakeholders uh, how some effect looks. Also, runtime virtual textures are just awesome, so use them for your projects. The only caveat is that for now you cannot read them in uh, Niagara. However, I suppose that they will add this uh, in 
uh, next updates. Also, the interactions are still best done using the render target textures. There are some problems with runtime virtual textures that prevent you from uh, doing some persistency over frames. And the last part is that Bezier curves are super easy, fast, cheap, and look good, so are great for uh, visuals. So thank you. <laughs> this was a quite fast talk. Here I have some uh, resources and you don't have to take photos and I really uh, recommend you uh, going through them if you want to learn more about this uh, new grass rendering technique. Especially the first one uh, about the procedural grass in Ghost of Tsushima. They explain the technical details uh, a lot better. But also you have some uh, links to Niagara, to uh, runtime virtual textures of how to set them up. And on this link, you, have, uh, you can get this link and you can get all the slides from this presentation. You can get those resources. And also, uh, for Bezier curves, there are better explanations if you go to Desmos uh, in the links where I presented the Bezier curves. So thank you again for your, to uh, for your time. And if you have any questions, please ask. <laughs> So if there are no questions, then thank you again. Oh, <laughs> there are questions. OK. Uh, hello, man. Thanks for the talk. Uh, have you measured how performant it is to use Niagara in a case like that? Um, I measured it roughly, so I saw that with around two million, two and a half million of grass blades in the scene, at around uh, four milliseconds of some Niagara doing stuff, and then another two milliseconds of rendering. Of course, it could be optimized, as I didn't like spend more time on optimizing, and there is a lot of resources with the Ghost of Tsushima talk of how they optimize it. Okay, thanks a lot. Hi, thank you, f thank you for your talk. Uh, is it com still compatible with um, Alpha Test and uh, early Z Pass, for example, to have some hybrid mode? Uh, like, I'm not sure uh, about that. Uh, like, we don't use any transparency for that, so <laughs> I would need to test it. Sorry. <laughs> I suppose that it works with uh, the pre-pass uh, from what I saw, but I don't, I'm not sure about the alpha test. Uh, I mean, just must material, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I didn't okay, test okay, it. Okay, so thank you. I can test it and you can get into contact with me and, and we can see. Thanks. Okay, like if there are no more questions, thank you again. And oh, <laughs> another question. Every time I want to end, then someone else. No? <laughs> okay, so thank you again and see you around. Thank you.